So here we are finally exploring the theorem where we see how an n by n invertible matrix is going to have a unique solution. So if matrix A is an n by n invertible matrix, then for every vector B in Rn, the non-homogeneous equation, matrix A times vector X equals vector B, has a unique solution. That solution is defined as vector X is equal to the inverse of matrix A times vector B. Now, there's two things we need to show here. We need to show that, number one, this solution actually exists. And once we have verified that, yes, this solution exists, we need to then verify that the solution is unique. So here we go. To get us started, we want to begin by simply letting A be an n by n matrix, an n by n invertible matrix. And we also want to go ahead and consider any vector b in Rn. So again, the first thing that we want to do here is show that a solution exists. So if we go ahead and let vector x be defined as the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B, we want to show that this vector x is in fact a solution to the non-homogeneous equation. So to do that, let's simply substitute vector x into the matrix equation, so matrix A times vector x. So here we go, we have matrix A multiplied by vector x, and we are replacing this x with the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. Beautiful. Now, by properties of matrix multiplication, we can rewrite this as matrix A multiplied by the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. And hey, we have matrix A multiplied by its inverse, so we know that this is equal to the n by n identity matrix multiplied by vector B. And now by matrix vector multiplication properties, we know that this is equal to vector B. Oops, we did it! Woohoo! And so we have completed the first part of our proof, and we have shown that for all vector B in Rn, the non-homogeneous equation matrix A times vector X equals vector B has a solution. And we know that that solution is vector x being defined as the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. Now, that's only the first part of this proof. We now need to go ahead and verify that this solution not only exists, but that it is also unique. So part two, show that this solution is a unique solution. So, saying that we need to show that the solution is unique, what, is, what do we need to do here? So, in other words, we need to show that if any vector other than x is a solution, then that vector must still be equal to the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. So, we need to show that if, say, a vector U is any solution to this non-homogeneous equation, then vector U must be the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. So to do that, let's let vector U be some vector in Rn. So we are going to let vector U be some solution vector in Rn. And let's suppose that therefore we have the non-homogeneous equation matrix A times vector U equals vector B. So using this, 
let's go ahead and left multiply this non-homogeneous equation by the inverse to see what happens. So we want to left multiply by the inverse of matrix A. So we have the inverse of matrix A multiplied by matrix A times vector U. And this is equal to the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. So by properties of matrix multiplication, we can reorder the terms on the left-hand side to be the inverse of matrix A multiplied by matrix A multiplied by this vector U and Rn, and that's still equal to the inverse of matrix A times vector B. And hey, since matrix A is invertible, we know that this product is the n by n identity matrix. So we have the n by n identity matrix multiplied by vector u, which is still equal to the inverse of matrix A times vector B. And by matrix vector properties, we know that this is simply vector u. The identity matrix times vector u equals vector u. And vector u is the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B, which is exactly what we needed. Woohoo! So we're able to conclude that therefore, the solution is unique. That no matter what the vector is, if it's any solution, it must still be defined by the inverse of matrix A multiplied by vector B. And so this completes the second part of our proof and completes the proof of the whole theorem. So let's go ahead now and explore this theorem with some examples.